happening in the world for the last month? Because we saw you about a month ago. Yeah, about a month ago. Um, the world keeps turning and keeps shakily going in one direction, then coming back from the other. If you take a, a general overview right now, it's probably still hoping that things are going to get better and glad that they're not getting any worse. And so that's sort of that's roughly where it sits. But I think that the 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 generality is, you know. The fallout of the earlier things we heard this morning, Cameron has resigned after the Brexit debacle and they're still trying to say, you know, Brexit means Brexit, but what does Brexit mean is the sort of story that's coming out of all that. May was at the G20 and talking about trade, apparently people are queuing up to do trade deals with the UK so that America doesn't matter and maybe Europe doesn't matter. Who knows, it's a, this, this spin around politics now it's hard to get at the truth. Yeah, post-truth post politics is what I was trying to get at. Right, I, uh, this, this is this, this, this amazing development that's come out of, I guess, politics broadly, but certainly <coughs> in the US. It really doesn't matter what the facts are. So a politician stands up and says, crime's getting worse. Crime's really terrible. We need to do something about crime. The facts say crime's actually getting better or there are fewer crimes. And the politician says, well, okay, they are the facts, but I'm a politician, I speak to feelings, so it's how people feel. So the issue is now, you know, politicians have always lied and it's ceasing to matter anymore that, that facts are not important, they speak to feelings. And if more people agree with the feelings pitch, then the politician gets elected the difficulty then smacks everybody in the face. It's one thing having an election based on feelings, but policies based on feelings are something of a worry. And I put a link in for anybody who wants to read it in The Economist. And it's sort of the, 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 the line that's starting to come out in politics. And it, I think it's something that we all have a responsibility, the whole leaders to account to be factual because facts drive policy and feelings driving policy could well turn into a world that none of us want to live in. Let's look at the interest rates. Well, last month uh, we were talking just before the OCR review. The Reserve Bank cut a quarter. Some of us got a bit of reduction from the, the bit of relief from the banks, but not the whole quarter. And some of us were pushing for a half. As a result of that and other things in the world, we've seen the currency strengthen. So all of my export interests are sort of feel a bit of pressure as a result of that. We've seen about 10% on the currency in the past six months. And that for some of us is 10% less revenue as a result of the changes. So that doesn't make you feel too happy. House prices? House prices, well, we've all seen it. You know, if you, I think if we'd have gone back a, the 2014 election when David Cunnell fell over himself around capital gains tax. If he'd said, if we have a capital gains tax, we won't have million dollar houses in Auckland, there might have been a completely different reaction to it. So we do still sit in that distortion. Average house price is a million dollars, 10 times median wages. It's a bit of a worry. And that all of the discussion around how do people get into a market that they're not in when prices are going up far, far faster than wages are going up. That's a, that's a, a broader societal question that we have to address. It's, a, it's that policy framework. What do we change to stop that from happening? Yep. And investment houses, of course. Oh, yeah. I mean, the Reserve Bank has changed the, the amount you have to put down as a deposit for, and I've put a link in for the Reserve Bank for anybody who wants to read all the boring details. But essentially, if you want to buy investment property now, you have to have a bigger deposit. And, and I guess we see that discussion around house prices and we worry about house prices falling. Well, if you think about it, if you're living in a house, what, what the price is doesn't matter. The price only matters when you come to sell it. And then it matters more or less depending on what you're going to do. Because if you're going to buy a bigger house, the price difference is what matters from the house you're selling to the house you're buying. If you're buying a smaller house, you know, those old buggers who are maybe selling the big <coughs> house to yep. buy a smaller one, well, we might lose. Well, maybe we should. I mean, I got a free education. I got a lot of things free that the youngsters don't get today. So actually hitting the people who are going from the big houses to the smaller houses might not be a bad outcome. 
of a general decline in house prices to bring them more into line with earnings. Immigrants, how does that fit in? Well, immigration is more people after more houses and there's the, the element of money from offshore and whether that money is clean money and how much money is being used around uh, the, the, the anti-money laundering or money laundering processes. You take money that is ill-gotten, you bring it into New Zealand, you buy a house, you sell the house, the money is now clean. It's not ill-gotten anymore, it came out of the New Zealand housing market. All of those add to pressures in the market. So there are pressures out there? Oh, well, there's pressures everywhere. I mean, A, we're not building as many as we should. And I've put a link in for that. The Bernard Hickey did a, an analysis on how many houses we're building now compared to what we've done in the past, and that's well worth a read. We're not building as many houses, so supply is poor. We've got significant demand, immigrants, offshore money, a limited supply, and so the people who do have the money uh, push up demand, push up price, pushing out the people who are struggling to get together a deposit and get into the entry level. I guess it's called inflation to a degree, but wages don't seem to be moving. Well, wages are pretty well stationary and have been now for some time. There's a, there's a movement, but we're in the in the sub 1% in, in, on average, and the, the movement of the median income to median house price and the likes of Auckland is up towards 10 now. So that's 10 times salary to buy the house. Now I remember in the dim and distant when I was being lectured as a young man, well, it was a long time ago. <laughs> no, not that long. You know, it was, it was the comment was <coughs> from the old boys who I was interacting with, you know, just remember it's a year's salary on a car and it's three years salary on a house. Don't go, don't break that rule and things will be fine. Now that happened because of the rules of the game. It wasn't me deciding that. I couldn't borrow any more than three times salary, so that tended to lock down the prices you could put forward to pay. Very, very briefly, world markets. As I said when we were opening, it's sort of good and bad. There's been a bit of a sell-off recently. The earlier sell-off from the beginning of the year has uh, come back. We had uh, more or less most markets pulling back all of the losses that they had in the early part of the year. It's softened, but we're still pretty well where we were when we opened the year. So in general, it's okay. There are question marks about the Fed, whether the Fed starts to lift interest rates and what that will do to equities and what that might knock on to everybody else. But in general, it is uh, sort of open. It's going to be okay and it's not getting any worse for the moment. John, thank you very much indeed.